Welcome back everyone to this video about the finite element analysis of beams. Uh, in the previous video, we showed, we showed you how to derive uh, the finite element model using the maxima. Uh, and we got the element uh, equations and the element matrix. We also showed you how to play around with it by changing few lines in the, in the code to get uh, higher order elements. Uh, in this video, we will be talking about how to assemble the structure uh, equations to get the different elements acting together in a, a single structure, which is called the assembly of uh, the uh, structure equations. Uh, well, let's uh, focus on a very simple structure uh, that's uh, composed of two elements. The first element uh, connects node 1 and node 2, while the second element connects node 2 and node 3. Notice here that both elements will uh, uh, act or uh, will affect the deflections of P2, uh, sorry, of V2 and V2 prime, the, def the lateral deflection and the slope at node 2. While uh, uh, at node 1, only element 1 uh, has a direct effect, and at node 3, only element 2 has a direct effect. We actually uh, can write the two equations, uh, each, uh, each for each element. Uh, we, for simplicity in this video, we will focus on uh, the case where the two elements are, are identical, having the same modulus of elasticity, the same second moment of area, and the same length, just to simplify uh, the uh, algebra that we're going to be presenting. Okay, we start with the element uh, equation or the element matrix. Notice that uh, each of uh, the nodes is presented by two columns and two rows uh, or associated with two columns and two rows in uh, the matrix. Uh, here, if we wrote down one, two, three, four, then this column will be associated with the first the deflection of the first node. The second column will be associated with the slope of the first node. The third column will be associated with the deflection of the second node. And the fourth column will be associated with the slope at the second node. Similarly, we can say the same about the rows. The same thing will be done in the global matrix. Now we have what? We have three nodes. Each has two degrees of freedom, so we have six degrees of freedom. Uh, so now we need a global matrix with six by six uh, rows and columns. Uh, each row and column uh, will be associated with one of these degrees of freedom. So now if we uh, call them one, two, three, four, five, and six, this is what we're going to uh, have. Uh, actually, I'm showing here the final form, but let's just imagine that this is an empty matrix. Now it's a zero, but uh, it's all zeros. I need to uh, put uh, the stiffness that's associated with each of the degrees of freedom into its place. Remember, for the first element, it has one, two, three, four, while the second element will have three, four, five, and six. Uh, here we have everything, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the first element will just fit in the first four by four submatrix of the global uh, matrix, uh, uh, covering all the degrees of freedom associated with it. Uh, now we get to the second element. It has identical uh, terms. So uh, uh, the only difference will be where it will be um, assigned in the global matrix. Uh, here it starts with a 3, uh, 4, 5, and 6, and the rows 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we will get to 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is actually where it's going to be uh, located. Uh, what, uh, what happened? We started with a 0 by 0, uh, sorry, with a 0 element matrix. Uh, then we added to it the first element in its, uh, uh, its uh, relative uh, locations. Then uh, we added to that the second element. 
uh, in its uh, relative uh, location as well. So what happened here is this part got added from both elements. So actually uh, the three, four part of the first element was added to the three, four part or the one, two, if you want to call it that, uh, uh, of the first element. That's why we can see here the 24, 12 plus 12, and the 8L squared, but 6L minus 6L and 6L minus 6L gave us zeros here. The same thing can be done or can be said about the generalized force vector that comes from the distributed forces. You see here uh, the generalized forces uh, on the first node just come from the first vector, and on the third node, uh, in the third node come, just come from the second element. While on the second node, we added both uh, uh, forces. Uh, actually, uh, this can be uh, illustrated by expanding the eight equations for, for each element and then adding them. If you are interested in seeing that, uh, it's uh, done step by step in the uh, bar uh, lesson. You can see there in the same procedure can be done for the view. Finally, here we can have a look at the concentrated force vector. Uh, here is the first node, the third node. The second node comes from the two parts uh, from each element. We don't know which part acts on which element, but adding them up gives us the total of the concentrated forces at this node. And finally, this is how it looks like. Okay, so uh, we, in this video, we quickly went through how we assemble the elements. Again, I advise you, if this is not that clear, either start by writing down the eight equations uh, of the two elements, or uh, check the bar lesson uh, and the, the assembly video of the bar lesson. There it will be uh, explained a little bit uh, clearer, because there we, we need only to write four equations, not eight, so uh, uh, it was a, a bit easier to do it there. Uh, and in the next video, we will apply the boundary conditions. We'll see how will this affect the assembled set of equations and how we can get the primary equations and the auxiliary equations to be solved uh, for the finite element problem of these. So see you next video.